Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I am here checking out Samurai Showdown V Special. This is the latest in the line of Code Mystics ports of old Neo Geo titles to the Vita. They did also do, um, I believe it was Super Star Wars? And Metal Slug. Metal Slug was actually Neo Geo title, but anyway, you get the point. It's from them, and it's also from SNK, so it's not from, it's not from, um, Dot .emu, who did Windjammers, and I heard that there's been actually a few problems with Windjammers that I personally didn't see. I did have, like, one problem getting into a game with that, but I thought it was just my connection. But anyway, let's go have a look at Samurai Showdown V Special. This is a... Well, to be honest, I actually had to go and look this one up, because I haven't... I'm not very familiar with Samurai Showdown, and there's another reason, but we'll get onto that. There's not that much to see out here, honestly. It's a very bare-bones port. You've got all your trophies, but the trophies are literally just beat the game with every character and win multiplayer 20 times and 10 times in a row, which, you know, sounds like absolute hell to me. You can check your rankings for total wins and character wins for online stuff in arcade mode, which is the only mode. Also, they call it normal mode up here, so I'm not entirely sure why it's not arcade. You do have a gallery, which has things like concept art and such if you beat the game, like I have beaten it once, which unlocks this piece of concept art. I have no idea who those two are. And you've got the character that you beat the game with, ah, and that's Charlotte, who I beat the game with, because, well, Charlotte appears to be my girl in this game, for some reason. There's a lot of weird characters in this game, and it took me a while to find someone I was actually comfortable with, but, you know, that's just me. I suck at these sorts of games. We'll go have a quick look at the options real quick. I did have to turn the difficulty level down to 1, and I still lost like 3 out of 5 rounds that I had to play the arcade mode, so... Yeah, the AI in this game is a lot more brutal than you might expect. All the usual stuff here, including the notable ability to actually turn down the violence and the blood. Notably, this will also affect matches that you host online, so if you are playing with low violence and you play with that online, it will actually affect the other person's client as well. Notably, it'll also affect their language, which is a little odd. I was playing with a couple of people who were obviously foreign, because I had like 300 millisecond ping. And it was weird. I think I was playing in Italian. Like, the the um, intertitles that come in before the fight starts, they were all in Italian for some reason. Didn't mean to go to game options. The game didn't register that I pressed the down button. Sound options, pretty basic. Video options. So you've got all of these here, you know what, I'll wait until we're actually in game to demonstrate those. Notably you can't actually do it out here because it can't, you can't really see the effects of it. And you can come here to rebind the controls. Now, what I've got here for the most part is the default stuff. I've got the four face buttons where they usually are. However, I have mapped L and R to A, B and C and B, C and D because, as it turns out, this game requires frame perfect simultaneous button presses and me trying to do that with three buttons at once is just impossible. I have enough trouble with just two. So, I've got it mapped to L and R here because A, B, and C is very important because that's your rage explosion. And B, C, and D is important because that's your time slowdown, which is an interesting way of going about things. But we'll get onto that once we're actually in the game. You do have a practice mode, but there is not much in the way of options here. You can order the AI to do some specific things. You can order them to attack or guard. You can make infinite rage gauge and concentration one. I'm not even entirely sure what that is. I've been having trouble getting it to work. Overkill, same thing really. And whatever two characters you're having, you can't even go to the character selection screen. So if you're having trouble remembering the characters' names, good luck with that. And of course you can exit. So as I said before, there's only one mode, which is the arcade mode. That's the mode we'll be playing for the majority of this video. However, I did actually try out the multiplayer for a couple of rounds. However, the entirety of people I played with were at 300 ping. You want to know what the game looks like at 300 ping? Well, I'm not going to play it right now, but I am going to cut immediately to a session I recorded just a few minutes ago. So yeah, enjoy that.
And that was that. It... Uh, 300 ping, I mean, like, I can excuse it from being terrible at 300 ping, and it feels like that it would work perfectly well if you're actually really close. And the nice thing is, you can actually do a match of both practice and story mode as well, as well as ad hoc sessions. So if you have two Vitas with copies of this game, that would probably actually work out fine. So, yeah, there you go. It probably won't be too bad, but then again, this is me we're talking about. I had a lot less problems than most other people did when they were playing Windjammers, so there might be some huge issue that I just haven't seen. So let's actually go on into the normal mode, or the arcade mode as it really should be called. This game actually has a lot of characters, so you got like um, 27, 28 here, which is actually a really good number for a two-dimensional fighter like this one back in the Neo Geo days. That guy is horrendous. That's probably what I'm going to look like in 20 years, but yeah, you've got a ton of different characters here, like a girl that uses a bow and arrow in a sword fight, that does not sound good. Uh, you've got... You've got this guy here, he's ridiculous. I love his blade because he can throw it along the ground and up in the air and do all sorts of neat little tricks with it. You've got tons of different people with swords. This is a weapons-based fighter after all. I do like this guy, but I'm very bad with him because his recovery times are ridiculous, so you really need to know your spacing and your um, attack timings. And... There's just, there's just a ton of different movesets going on here. There's the um, evil Ryu version of this guy. Not entirely sure what the deal is with him. And that guy is retarded. Do not play him the first time like I did. But anyway, I'm just going to pick the character that I'm used to, which is Charlotte. I do quite like Charlotte. She's got... She's absolutely full of herself, which works for me. So... The arcade mode game, um, the arcade mode in this game is actually really fucking short. Like, it's something like five stages and a boss, and that's it. I don't know if I'm missing something, but... If I am, well, there you go. Just warn you now, I might be missing something. But, yeah, this is Samurai Showdown V. It is a Neo Geo fighting game, and, you know, those tend to look relatively similar to each other. However, they do play quite differently, like, um... I wouldn't say that coming into this game with King of Fighters skill will get you particularly experienced in Samurai Showdown unless you absolutely love playing a specific character from King of Fighters who turns out to be in Samurai Showdown. But anyway, very, very simple game going on here. We've got... We've got one-on-one -on -one fighting, obviously. It's, um... First... First to two wins. By default, anyway. And, notably, this is a weapons-based fighter. You don't get very many of those on the, um... Ne well, you actually, you did get a fair few on the Neo Geo, didn't you? But yeah, we, we haven't actually, um, seen too many of these just yet. We did see the last play, but this game takes a... This game takes a different approach to things. So, for one, your weapons actually do an absolute ton of damage with every swing. Now, as you can see, Kazuki, 15 seconds into the match, I've only hit him, like, three times, and he's already down to, like one-eighth of his health bar? It's pretty ridiculous. The amount of damage you dish out is kind of amazing, actually, just at times, just because of, um... Just because of... You just... You hit you hit them, and they lose, like, 25% of their health bar in the first shot. It's kind of weird just how much damage it does, but it's also helped out by the fact that this game is not combo focused in the slightest. Like, you do have a couple of combos which are like two or three moves long with every character, but other than that, everybody just has such high damage that, and you know, what, different ways of escaping from everything that it just, it seems like, it seems like combos really wouldn't play a big part in this game at all, and to be fair, they really don't. Seriously, the majority of damage you can do in this game is like single moves, so you, so you do want to avoid every attack, and if you do get into an attack, you'll know you'll be right out of it right away in order to try again, which is nice, because despite how much I like games like Blue and I absolutely suck at Guilty Gear, but despite how much I like those games, those games can get you stuck in like a 20-something move combo that you just can't escape from no matter what you do. Unless, of course, you spend, like, some kind of, like, consumable resource. But, yeah, for the most part, you'll be stuck in a combo that you really can't get out of too easily. In this game, that is not a problem, which is actually really nice. It also makes the game really beginner-friendly in the sense that it's actually relatively easy to pick up. All you need to do is memorize the game's move lists. And the move lists are actually really, really small. So, if I hit the select button right now, I can actually go and have a look at the skill list for Charlotte. And Charlotte's... Skill list is five moves long, and then she's got two moves for the weapon flipping and the overkill. Now, 
That was a horrible tutorial, and in fact, if you press the X button here, you can see that it'll tell you what buttons do what, so S means any slash. It'll tell you what concentration 1 is while the life gauge is blue, and then, yeah. And it'll tell you what you need to do to activate your overkill on your concentration 1 move. That's literally all it tells you. There is no other tutorial in the game whatsoever. There is nothing in the way to tell you what's going on other than the fact that you've got your four buttons. So, for example, would you know you could throw if you have looked at that tutorial? Would you know that there is a parry in the most ridiculous combination possible? It is down, back, forward, and then the special button, which by default is on triangle. And that parry can actually completely disarm the opponent if you time it right. Which is actually pretty impressive. And d disarming the opponent, again, something you wouldn't know you'd be able to do. How do you get your weapon back once it's on the ground? You have to uh, go over it, press down and, and the X button, which is your um, medium attack. Yeah, no way I would have figured that out without just experimenting while I'm getting someone coming after me while I've got absolutely no weapon. It's... It's just... Oh, also... Just something else I should mention. Pressing the A and B buttons, which are your light and your medium attacks at the same time. We'll do a heavy attack. Again, this is just shit you won't know. Like seriously, I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, there's my concentration one move for you. Good old Charlotte. But unfortunately, I got my arm slashed off and I'm just going to fall to pieces. I got Darth Mauled. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's actually surprisingly violent for, uh... When, when did this game come out? It was probably like, um, mid-90s at the earliest. So yeah, surprisingly violent. I think I'll, um, swap characters now, just for the purpose of demonstration. This is Jubei Yagyu, or Yagyu Jubei, I don't know what order that goes in. And it... And he is a lot like Charlotte. Similar move chains, similar general feel about him, but I... I'm also pretty decent with him, so maybe... Maybe this will work out. Yeah, see, I just got bloody blocked there. So, the game has absolutely no tutorial whatsoever, which really sucks, because there are so many different mechanics in this game that... basically require you to read up on a wiki. I had to go to a wiki to find out half the shit I could do in this game, which was... Which is... It's, it's, it's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. That is... I mean... In comparison to a game like Mark of the Wolves, where there isn't really too much that needs to be worried about, in this game you really do need the wiki to figure out just what the bloody hell you're actually capable of in this game, which is very... very um, offsetting, I've got to say, just because... Like, you'd think that they would put at least a decent tutorial into the game. Like, it doesn't even have to be like a... Like, I imagine that they don't have much room to, like, modify the original programming of the game. I imagine this is about as close to the port of the original Neo Geo, Neo Geo game as you can get. To the point where I imagine this is being emulated. At least that's what I think is going on, anyway. Uh, bloody Shizumaru is kicking my ass here, but anyway. But yeah, you'd think they'd put in at least a tutorial that's like, Okay, this is how you grab, this is how you block. And even then, just, like, give you a dude standing on screen to, you know, to just stand there and take some punishment while you're working on him. I really should have used my, um, Rage Explosion there. But yeah, anyway, um, Rage Explosion you can use when your power meter reaches the maximum. And I'm just, I'm gonna try that fight again, but it's actually gonna give me someone different because that's how continuing works in this game. Yeah, figure. <laughs> Yeah, but you'd think they'd give, give you at least, like, a couple of dudes just standing around and letting you beat the shit out of them until you figure out what your moves do. That would be nice, even if it was literally, even if it literally just launched into the training mode, had some text on screen that said something along the lines of... Had some text on screen that said something along the lines of, this is how you do this, here's the guy you can use to practice it on. But no, it doesn't have that, which means that I was kind of led to just figure this all out on my own, which... Trust me, this is me we're talking about. I can't do that shit very often, or very well, I should say. So, yeah, it's, it's why I love BlazBlue and Guilty Gear so much. Their tutorials are ridiculous, and Skullgirls. Skullgirls tutorial is the best tutorial I've ever seen because it gives you a 
it gives you a good idea of how to use every individual character as well. And to not see that in this, like, God knows how old fighting game, fighting game port, I should say, from, like, the late 1990s at the earliest, is just silly. Like, I don't know why that is. So yeah, I'm probably missing a bunch of the game's mechanics that I just have no idea about because I just... Because I'm just not good enough at fighting games to figure it out for myself. So, yeah. So yeah, I managed to... Um, that special move actually disarmed him, but he's, he's got his weapon back, unfortunately. But yeah, you are in a really bad position when you don't have a weapon. You can... You can beat, still beat the crap out of people with your fists, but you'll do absolutely no damage. You want to get your weapon back as fast as you can. But anyway, the actual fighting though, pretty damn good. Like, it's very slow. Like, it is definitely a slower based f paced fighter than most I've played on the Vita at the very least. But that just means that you have to be more careful, because as I said before, the amount of damage you deal in this game is absolutely horrendous with every strike. Like, see that? He just took out like a quarter of my health in one or two attacks. So. You really need to be careful when you're low on health, because seriously, one attack can swing the fight. That's exactly what they said on the wiki, by the way. Like, the wiki said that while there is a tier list and some characters are better than others, just because, you know, it's a fighting game, that shit happens. It still says that due to the fact that everybody can do so much damage, it's pretty much anyone's game at any time. And after having played it for a couple of hours, I can fully agree with that. Anybody can beat anybody in this game if you're good enough, so that's that is, that is actually a really nice thing to have. It's a it's a nice way to do a fighting game, and it makes matches really tense because being able to be taken out at the drop of a hat makes things all the more interesting. Also, it makes me play a lot more defensively because I'm a I'm a wuss. <laughs> I am I am an absolute wuss when it comes to games like this. But anyway, gotcha. Oh, he just falls over. He doesn't even... He doesn't even do some impressive split. There's a fair few splits. And most of them are fairly gory. You're unworthy. <laughs> That's not how you spell your, mate. Ah, I guess it is a late 90s fighting game English translation, isn't it? Oh, hey, Genjuro. I actually don't mind this guy. When I'm using him. When I'm fighting him, he's a pain in the ass. But anyway... Let's do this. So, but yeah, as I said, the actual fighting is really engaging because of the high risk, high reward going on. There's a lot of zoning play due to, you know, everybody's got weapons, so everybody's got ridiculous range. But that also means that the enemy has ridiculous range and you do have to, it, it, it has a different way of going about things than your, you know, stereotypical fighting game because it's a weapons based fighter. So it makes things interesting. It is a... Considering that I usually play, like, physics... I'm um, not physics-based, like, just regular fighters, not weapons-based fighters. I find myself being entertained by the different variety that I've got going for, for them in this one. It's a fun game. It really is. I was... Even with that, um, super slow, uh, multiplayer match that I was doing a few minutes ago that I showed you back then, it was still fun, despite the fact it was slow as hell. Like, seriously, the game was, like, one-third speed, but... Still works pretty well, actually. I... Oh, God. Look at that. Look at that. Half my health gone in five seconds. That's that's just that's just how this game rolls, yo. Yo, yo, yo. I'm, I'm the widest kid on the block. But yes. Ha! But yeah, the game is really good. Like, there's a lot of characters, which en ensures a lot of weapon variety. There's a... Ow. I'm gonna rage explode here, just so he can't. Just so, just so I am sorta of not screwed. Oh shit. No, no, no. Yes, got him. <laughs> I like how the timer up the top says die once someone's, um, someone's lost. That's kind of neat. The graphical presentation is also really good as well. I mean, so I said that I'd be I'd have to go over once we're in game, but let's actually go and have a look at the video options now since, since we've done a few fights. You can turn the scan lines up, 
You can smooth out the image. I'm going to turn all of these on just so I can display it all at once. You can see how it's difference between large, normal, and stretched there. I prefer large just because it fills more of the screen without stretching it out uh, sideways. You can turn the flicker filter on and off. I'm not even entirely sure what that does, but there you go. Uh, and you can change the frame art on the sides there, but I prefer to leave that off. And you can reset everything to default. So let's see how it looks now that I've turned basically everything back on. The answer is significantly different. I'm guessing the flicker filter is just um, for like the shadows down there. See how they're um, they're coming in and out every frame or so? Yeah, I imagine that's what that's about. Bastard threw me. There we go. I finally hit someone with that piece of shit move. But yeah, the um, the art and the the art and the sound and all that are all. Really good as well. I mean, it's a Neo Geo fighting game. I'll just reset. Um, I'll just reset everything now because I hate looking at it when it's so blurry. Like the the appeal of this the appeal of this art is the amount of detail in the pixels. And if you use any sort of filters whatsoever, whether they be scan lines or smoothing filters, you lose all this ungodly amount of detail. This like seriously, I don't know how they managed to. The amount of money this sort of animation must cost is just beyond belief, I gotta say. It's just, wow. A Neo Geo game is always nice to look at. Definitely not my favourite looking Neo Geo game. That would probably go to, like, um, KOF 98 or something, but... It is still a really good looking game. And... I mean, that... I, I don't know of a Neo Geo fighting game that didn't look good. I, I really didn't, but anyway. Slow down time. And I completely fucked that up. Which means I probably deserve to lose here. Oh, no you don't. And he... It looked like he cut my hand off, but I'm probably going to split down the middle. So there we go, I got Darth Maul again. I'll continue again, but I will select a character, hopefully, that is more that is interesting that we haven't seen yet. Oh, yeah, him. He'll do. I think I know some of his, some of his moves, anyway. Oh, great, we get to fight against the giant demon dude. <laughs> this is gonna look so fucking weird. Yeah, look at that. Look, look, look at that. Look, look at him. Look at him, he is the ugliest motherfucker. The ugliest of the motherfuckers. Also, he, his health bar is like the longest of every character in the game, I think. It would make sense considering his size. Also, holy shit. But yeah. As a fighting game, it's very enjoyable. And while the online performance may or may not be great, I... If you're looking for a weapons-based fighter, it's kind of hard not to recommend Samurai Showdown V. Despite the fact that I absolutely suck at it. Well, why did he have to pull me up against this? I haven't actually fought this guy yet. I've been waiting for him to show up. I've been, I've, I've been playing arcade mode for like two hours at least, and he still hasn't shown up in any of the random matches. It's weird. Yeah, now I'm dead. Apparently not? Okay. Not screwed. You get the... Yeah, you get that. Because why not? I'm not going to live through the rest of this fight, obviously, but... It was worth a try, right? Neat little ninja tricks from my mate here. Just fading in and out of existence and only to... That is horrifying. Seriously, what the fuck is this thing? Probably some kind of, um... Probably some kind of weird Japanese demon thingy. Uh, him. Why not? Who are we fighting this time? Gelford, apparently. Like, Gilford? No? I'm, I'm probably missing something here, but yeah. There's a couple of, um, characters based off the, um... Ancient samurai legends like um Hattori Hanzo is a character in this game. 
I'm not going to claim to know very much about um, Japanese folklore, but I definitely know about Hattori Hanzo. Or at least I know the name, you know. I hate that move. Always catches me off guard. Also, this guy's got a dog following him around. That's hardly fair. Damn it. Oh, the dog came and gnawed my face off, apparently. Since my head went off screen. I haven't noticed anything in the way of technical problems when it comes to this port. Uh, I think that the, I think some of the slowdowns that show up when the when massive hits connect are on purpose. I'm pretty sure that's a, something that's been done on purpose anyway. And well, other than that, the game runs absolutely fine. There's a lot of camera scrolling in and out, and it seems to just it seems to hold up. No major slowdowns or anything, which is pretty good. There we go. You just eat that. And now that you're disarmed, I can come at, come at you with impunity. He says as he gets the ship being now by that dog. And I got kicked in the face and that's how I died. Good god. I told you I suck at this game and this is, this is CPU level 1. Just, just as a reminder, it's CPU level 1. Alright, let's give one more character a shot. We're coming up on the half hour mark. Uh, him. Why not? See his super long range spear of. Oh, great, now I have to fight Charlotte. Lovely. Ooh. Seriously, the range on this spear is ridiculous. Look like that. Come on, Charlotte. I do I don't like that there isn't like any extra modes whatsoever. Like even um it was the last play two, right? I think the last play two had a survival mode. Survival mode at the very least. Like I I really do enjoy those weird like side modes in fighting games that do all sorts of weird shit that you really wouldn't be able to get away with in, in your typical arcade mode, like um, Abyss mode in Blazblue that turned the game into um, sub RPG. Then you had um, like Injustice and um, Mortal Kombat before it that had those towers. Those were all neat. I, I really like weird sub modes like that, but even then, this sort of thing, not including even like a typical survival mode, is. Just really odd to me, I've got to say. Not gonna let you get me, Charlotte. I know you well enough. I should be able to beat you. Right. Note to self: Do not let go of the fucking block button while she's doing her. Many stabs in your general direction move. That would be a very bad idea. You know what? Find one more. Bring it up to half an hour. Oh, and this is, um... No, that's not the boss character. Who's the boss character? I know he's here somewhere. Him. He's a fucking weirdo. But anyway, this is the random character selector here. Of course, I get the tiny little girl. Rimu Ruru. Okay. That's a name. I do not know how to play this character at all, so... I think I've learned to avoid that fucking attack at some point. Oh god, I kicked the poor puppy. Didn't even think you could do that, but anyway. Oh, come on, I was holding back. 
and I'll just in the middle of an attack. Yep. This is pretty much how it's going down for me the majority of the time that I've been playing, and as I said twice already, level one AI. Ow. Really? Really? Okay. Could have sworn I was holding back there and... Yep, down I go. Down the middle. <laughs> down the middle. Yeah, you get the general idea. I absolutely suck at fighting games, so... Getting some decent footage out of me is like trying to... Squeeze wine from a bloody lemon. It's just not gonna happen. But yeah, that was a quick look at Samurai Showdown V Special. The port seems okay, but the actual, like, content of the port is kind of lacking. I get that it's meant to be a direct port, and it might be hard to do, like, a survival mode if literally all you can work with is, like, the, the ROM that you've been given. But still, just kind of annoying that those sort of modes aren't there, but it's still a pretty good fighting game, so I don't really have that much against it, and wikis and all that do exist, so... Whatever, you've been watching for the past 30 minutes, I'm sure you can figure out if you want this or not. Hopefully the multiplayer actually works, if you actually picked this up and you're having problems with the multiplayer, put it down in the comments, let other people know what your experiences are. It's not like someone who is playing in Australia can get a good idea of a multiplayer from a game that requires you to be in the same continent as the majority of the population. But anyway, this has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.